Right. So I've asked people to put in the chat box which were the things in, today, in the email this morning that caught your imagination that thought, I have to be there today. Um, I'm covering everything that I put in the email, so, but it'll be sort of a bit of a whistle stop tour because there's lots of it. But just to make sure that, you know, if, if there's anything that particularly that you want to, and I've also, I just make sure that I'm covering it. So quite a few of you put the, the golden carrots, um, performance management, yeah, making sure you actually move things forward. Um, yeah, being able to prove you're actually moving towards your goals, because that's one of the things I want to talk about today. Oh, well done, Andrew, everything. Good. Yes, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. So, those four joining us, and then as soon as they're in, we'll start. And then I'll probably let people in this time ago, unless, um, did I see that you were in Victoria? So if I make Victoria the co-host and she can let people in as well, if that's okay. Right, so today, thank you very much for coming everybody. Welcome to our regular Tuesday get together. Um, so today I'm going to just point you to things that you've already got in your toolbox um, and uh, you know that you should be able to access quite easily and I've broken it down into different sections because I think we probably need to think about different areas. Um, so the first thing really is updated resources. So I'm just going to share my screen. And you should be able to now see it and go in. Okay. So the big things that we've updated this week are the uh, IHT systems. Um, there are quite a few different bits and pieces that are involved with the IHT health check and the IHT systems. And uh, part of our agreement with Proactive Tax is that they keep this up to date for us. Um, so they're keeping that up to date, um, just waiting for them to send me any changes that I should make to the personal balance sheet um, in line with anything else that's been going on. But everything else has been updated. So the most important document is this one, the overview, but you must read this first. So I'm not sure why it's down the last step, so we need to just check that. So if you can see, this is the one we, that you need to, if you've got any doubt of what's going on, check this date at the top, okay, because we do review it every year. Um, and so this has all of the opportunity and the links to everything that's in System Builder um, and also further down the process. So how you do it. So how do you generate interest in getting people that are having IHT health checks? And there's a whole series of documents, including the client engagement clarification letters, which um, are there's quite a few of them in, in System Builder, which are about making sure that um, you tell people that that there are things that you will not do unless they say they want that help and they will pay for it. Um, and IHT planning, maybe, you know, health check may be one of them. So you need to, need to check that. Um, there are quite a few things that we need to think about that. So again, if you want to have a look at them, please go and just put in um, CC for client engagement clarification in the knowledge base, and you'll see a list of the ones that we've done for you to just check. Because again, it's that scope creep where people think, oh, my accountant should be doing that as part of the fee. But actually, we need to check about that. Uh, then actually, when you're carrying out the initial health check, what you need to do first, which is fact finding. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that obviously you'll need to just check um, and possibly then use the personal balance sheet to get that information together because that was what it was originally intended for, IHT planning. And then there is a report template. So basically you just fill in the spaces on that. So that makes that quite easy to generate quite an extensive template. Emma, and then, uh, Emma you, you said something about ICC or something like that, did you? CEC, yeah. So e -E CEC stands for Client Engagement Clarification, which is a bit a lot of type into the knowledge base. So if you just type yeah. CEC in the, in the search. You're, you're speaking so fast. You must have too many coffees like me. I'm sorry. I will slow down. Thank you. I will slow down. Very okay. So, so yeah, the client engagement clarification letters, which are shortened to CEC in the knowledge base, because obviously it's too much to type. Um, they are they are letters that you send to the client explaining that there are services that you need to make them aware of that they're not currently getting from you, um, and if they want them, then they there is a fee for doing it. 
but that you have you, it's part of your um, professional requirement to tell them that they probably should have this done. Um, so having a, um, an IHT check, health check is probably a good thing to do to see if they're planning properly for uh, inheritance tax. So this is the whole system notes. Um, and you can see it explains it. There's an action planner. Uh, there are help sheets for you as well behind the scenes. Um, and then again, what to do to follow up. So this is all uh, dealing with it. So for example, if it's wills, then you could refer them to an existing lawyer for a new will or you know somebody you trust. Uh, you could perhaps have an agreement with another refer, uh, refer like the, another lawyer so that you do get a payment for it, but you decide the best how you want to do that. Um, so all of this, I don't need to read this to you, you know, um, but there are obviously long-term the opportunities and I know some of you are already doing probate work so you know there is an opportunity there to talk to them about that as well so in the system here what we've done is every document that's connected that we have set aside and checked every single one of these okay so just so you know it's now up to date ready to use uh, we'll be we're currently working on as well on updating some of the marketing literature so you'll look if you look out for the what's new document you'll see that we'll do that um, um and also we've uh, got quite a few of the business builder forums that we've been updating as well and working out again how you can promote that like i mentioned last week as a service that that you could deliver leveraging your time to a group of clients or prospects um, as, as some added value sort of uh, business advice, business growth work. So um, that's really what I just quick update on some of those basic things. Yeah, Rose, it is a challenge to find your way around System Builder. Um, and if you do have any challenges at all, please give us a call. Like I said, basically go back to the knowledge base. In this case, I just put IHT in, but if you put, if I just if put in CEC, like I was talking about then, you'll get the different ones that we've got. So business structure, registered office, um, probate, and then we've got a whole list of IHT and other ones. So just, just look at those and see, um, there's quite a few in there. The next thing I wanted to talk about was um, marketing. I think this is a, you know, it's a really good time, isn't it, for marketing and um, one of the things we're trying to do, aren't we, is trying to attract our ideal client. And, and when we're doing um, positioning, we do a lot of work, don't we, about you know, who is our ideal client, what sort of language attracts them. Um, and we spend quite a lot of time and effort, you know, perhaps reviewing your website, perhaps reviewing your LinkedIn profile, perhaps reviewing your sort of marketing that you've currently got out there. Um, but how do we actually capture details of prospects? Because a lot of the time, like LinkedIn, it's who are you connected to? If you're doing email marketing, it's people already on your list. If it's website, how do people find your website? You know, how do you get them there? Um, so the best thing to do is actually to encourage people to find you either through um, perhaps an article in uh, local magazines. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you now have got these little small, we have them, these little A5 magazines that come round bi-monthly that are, are people, and there's a lot of people putting little articles in advertising, get your free gift for, you know, contacting us. It could be that you could put a post on Facebook, um, you know, that you want to encourage people to come and get something from you. Um, and there are a couple of things that I thought would be really useful to know about that you've got in System Builder that you could use and just give away as free. So um, the first one I want to do is called Accounts Made Easy. Okay, uh, this, is, this is the content, there's like a front page as well. Um, so this is a document, again, you would, make this brand this how you like it's just when you download it it's just a word document you can change it however you want okay but this is about helping people make sense of the accounts they've got so as a prospect even you know do you get your accounts from your accountant you haven't got a clue what they're talking about 
why not read our accounts made easy document or come and have a chat with us about what those numbers actually mean. Um, and it's a very it's a very nice little document. So it has a little introduction that explains about the fact that you know accounting is not is not something that um, is useless. Actually, it's a really a necessity. It's really important. We can't afford to not have those key numbers. Um, and so, as part of that, even the smallest business should be having business plans and cash flow forecasts. They should be having bookkeeping and know their you know live data have micro accounts so they can make uh, decisions, you know, know what their bank, you know, what their, what money they owe and what money they have. Um, and actually look at what, whether or not they're hitting their forecasts. You should be doing these too, shouldn't you? You know, and looking at those forecasts and monitoring them. So if we are going to survive or is any business going to survive over the next year and who knows what changes are going to happen, even when, we get to that lovely June the 21st, no one's really sure what's going to be happening out there and, and um, things will change still. You know, we need to have plans and we need to have contingency plans, you know, and, and the, uh, the businesses we work with need to have that information too. So it's a good time to have these conversations. What's your contingency plan? Well, you know, for example, if you're a restaurant, what's your contingency plan if you're going to be like completely overwhelming bookings? How are you going to manage that in a way that you can encourage people to perhaps book at a certain another date? Could you connect them to anniversaries or could you connect them to birthdays or could you connect them to, I don't know, some, some, some day of the year that's important, Australia Day or, you know, whatever, find a date. So connect. Um, but you can come up with lots of that. So this is about saying to people, you know, it's not just about accounts. It's about more than that. But this is about understanding what it means. Now, this is a bit that you can write. So this is a little bit about what you are, you know, in your business. Maybe you're award winning. You've won one of our awards or somebody else's account the ages. Maybe, you know, you've, you've been highlighted um, by that. So you, you, even if you're not award winning, you could put, you know, um, some testimonials from your existing clients, things that you've done, things that you've helped them with. Um, and then why talk to us? So this is your sales pitch. OK, so this is about, again, highlighting your ideal client and connecting to that ideal client. Um, and this is about, you know, we understand you, uh, you deserve to be served by experts. And, and um, I love that idea, you know, of a big, a big business, sorry, a big accountancy service for small businesses. So the fact that, you know, just because they're small business, it shouldn't, it shouldn't mean they don't get the quality of if they were working with, you know, one of the top accountancies, because you are, you know, show you how to succeed, not just with your accounts. Be practical, you know, and this can be based on however many years of management experience you've got. We're trying, you know, we're banning jargon. So we're trying to be clear with everything that we say and we offer fixed fees, okay. And then, you know, so this is why we produce these notes so you can find out about us. This is all based on an analogy about driving a car. So you, I'm not gonna read it again because there's too much to sort of go through. But basically, you know, who will be interested in having your accounts? Who needs to know about it? Why is it important for your credit history and things like that? You know, why they should work with you, a qualified accountant, um, not just somebody who's out there who's, who uses the word um, because you can't trust, you know, trust the quality of the work, what accountancy means. And then basically, again, what, what do you mean? What are financial accounts? What are management accounts? And then again, in, in terms, what is like, what is a profit and loss account? What does it show you? What is a balance sheet? What does it show you? And so on. I'm not, again, not going to go through all of this. So it's a really nice resource that you can brand up. It's a Word document. You can download it. You can tweak it if you don't like it, but it's very nice as a sort of explanation. Um, and again, there's some wording in this that maybe you want to use on your websites. It might be a wording that you want to use elsewhere. Okay. And at the end, if you'd like a no strings type free meeting to help you get the most out of your business, or you have a friend who'd like a copy of this, call me now or email me now. So a really nice, simple Word document that you can use that you could have as your freebie. Okay. And all the insider reports are really great for that. Um, but again, you want to pick the ones that you're happy that if somebody rings you and says, oh, I've got your accounts made easy, you know what it's going to talk about and you're quite happy about that. 
There are two others that I wanted to uh, show you. So, um, so the second one is, I still can't find it. I got up early today. See, even I can't find them sometimes. So ready to use text for a golden carrot, managing your time tips booklet. So this is again, um, a, a golden carrot that's ready to use, okay? And we've just given you it in word format at the moment, um, but you can produce this as a booklet, online or offline, as a PDF, as a hard copy, whatever you want. Again, if you're gonna just do it as like a Word document, save it as a PDF. So this is about managing your time. So 17 tips for business owners on how to manage your time more effectively. So here we go, loads of things in here, lots of things you and I talked about before. Okay, so all of that is in there ready. That you could again turn into a document or whatever else. They've got some ideas of pictures you wanna put on here um, and things like that. So you look at this, tweak it how you want. And obviously at the end, you know, if you'd like to talk to us, then please get in touch. This is what it's trying to do, isn't it? Get information. Obviously, if you're putting this onto a lead page or a website, you're wanting to get them to give you the email address and hopefully their, their name and possible the business name um, when they download it. So at least you've got some information to follow it up. So, and again, with all these things, you can then, if you've collected that data, you can always contact them and go, did you manage to download it? What did you learn? What were the three things you're going to do? or the one thing you're gonna do. And then the third thing that I wanted to show you is the tips booklet. Okay. So this is 55 tips on how to be more successful. So you can see this one, we've actually had it graphically designed, um, but again, you can download it, change it, print it however you like. Um, and so we've got a little bit here about what do we mean by success? What are success, sorry, successful people like? Again, I'm not going to read this. You can have a look at this, can't you? You can go through this all yourself. But it's a, again, it's a nice document. It's a nice booklet you can have. Um, I'm just wondering if I've got my copy of tonight. Excuse me. It's difficult because I'm not in my office at home. Um, but you can have it printed out. So this is the sort of thing as well, you could just get it printed in a little booklet or you can get people to download it, however you like. So the only thing you need to add on the back is obviously your details, something about that. Okay, so again, depending on how, how detailed you want the resources, lots of golden carrots already in there, lots of things that you can give away free. So I just wanted to remind you that there are there, if you're going to start doing this, if you're going to start marketing and you want to be giving, getting people to follow through and give you information, you want new pages, then let us know. You know, it's something that, that, that we can do. Obviously, once you're an approved member, you can get the AVM book. <laughs> and we already have some ready written um, emails and stuff to go out to collect people's information. And then you can give them the book. Um, and also some follow-up emails after they've had the book to stay in contact. So there's lots and lots of ways of getting in contact. Again, there's a huge amount of other things in here um, about golden carrots or lead generators. But I just thought, like, I just wanted to pick three that I think, you know, are pretty much ready to go. You can just use them however you like. Um, the next bit I wanted to just talk about, um, because I think it had come up here, is their training on how to set up for email marketing and data capture. There is some stuff about that. Yes, uh, Raza, I will contact you. All right. 
Brilliant. Dawn got the 55 Tips book branded and printed, and it was a great giveaway. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's a nice thing to just have a. There's another one about um, finding the time as well, which that, sorry, that you can get the time one printed up. And I used to have that as well. That's not in there, not in stock. Typical, isn't it? Never mind. I will have them ready. So that, that, that's important. So the next thing I want to talk about is goals. So I've talked about this quite a few times, haven't I? Um, um, and we know, um, you know, if we go into goals, okay, you've got a lot of resources. And I have asked many of you, um, and I know that you've done it with your practice growth expert or you've done it with me, is to actually fill in your own goal setting tool, okay? Um, so this is the one we ask you to fill in. It's exactly the same as the one that's for clients, okay? Um, and most importantly, to think about those goals. Now, one of the really important things that people often forget is the measurable bit in the SMART, okay? How are we going to chunk this down and see how we're going to move towards it? Um, and if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, um, I pointed you to a resource that's about goal review. Um, and it just asked you to just think about where are you at? And I suggested that you did that, you know, quarterly or every six months to look at that. Again, that's in System Builder. OK, um, I think it's important that you do that. You make sure that you have this goal review plan, you know, because you want to be able to do that. But I also mentioned before that in Coach Accountable, you have the ability to put in your own metrics. So your metrics should be your goals, okay? And right back at the masterclass, if you've just been on it or um, masterclass in the past or when you've had calls with Shane, Shane is quite tough, isn't he, about you setting your goals and what are the important numbers? Um, and for those of you that have on the recent member, uh, masterclass, I'm hoping that you've shared with the practice growth expert pages, the pages around the what you want and what it needs to look like, business needs to look like with the practice growth experts so that they can help you. But in that, and in this document, the, the, um, in this clarity one, we have the goals, which are your personal ones. And we have your business ones here, which we say commit as many as you like. Okay. And then we have some goals about how you want to spend your time, where in the business you want to spend your time, and then your key numbers. Those key numbers, they should be in Coach Accountable. You should be tracking that. And the beauty with the metrics is you can set up reminders. So in this case, I've got income, and I've just told it that it's a month, and it just needs to track it on the last day of the month. It's not going to be right exactly, is it? But if I haven't entered a value in seven days after the month end, it will send me a reminder so Emma, that I can do that. Sorry? Yeah. Emma, is this available to members? Yes, yes, you should all have it. Yeah. Yeah, All right. if you, Glory, if Glory, Glory, Glory talks to um, Jenny and uh, she gets to coach Campbell through that, but I didn't realise it was uh, part of the tools for us. Well, and you can't obviously use it with members. You can't use it with clients. I'm thinking about yourself first. All right, okay. But right. you can. I mean, it's it's a third party tool, so there's no reason why you couldn't get to use it. I mean, it's not expensive as a tool for tracking. Right. You know, if you've got enough clients that work with it, and it's a very simple tool to set up. But I'm thinking more right. about you because. Um, it's real important. Neil, you can't find these tools either. Is, is that you can't find them in Coach Accountable? Sorry, Neil. Hi, Emma. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yes, can. Thank Hi. you. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, um, I've gone into uh, System Builder and Coach Accountable, but, um, okay. but don't worry, you carry on and... Um, if I can't okay. find it, I'll catch up with the AVN team okay. on, a, on a later call. But yeah, don't stop okay. the- that's um, fine. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want people to not know where I'm looking. That's the only thing. I mean, this is something yeah. I've created. I've just added a metric. But what I'm saying is it's with your practice growth expert, which in Neil's case is me, we need to set these up so that you actually then have a trigger to remind you to do this, you know? Um, I've put, again, with happiness, I've set a happiness score up. Um, I've given myself a score of one to 10, but I've told it, I just want to do this arbitrarily. So it should just send me a reminder if I haven't 
added a value in 10 days because it's such a, an arbitrary thing. So I just need to sort of randomly just say, okay, do it. And what it does is it, it will text you. So it'll send you a message on your phone um, and say, right, you need to just put a number in here. And so mine, it'll say, right, how happy are you? I'll come up as a text, I'll put seven. And, and as soon as I've clicked seven reply, it automatically fills this in for me. So it tracks it. Um, and you can add new data points in. And then maybe one of the important things is impacts. So, um, you know, it could be that I've got here make an impact on the last day of the month. I want to know, again, uh, you know, what impacts have I made on B1G1, for example. So there's lots of different ones here. I've put, you know, this was a different time scale that I was tracking happiness. So it kept that. Um, but you can choose to do that. And therefore, it's really important that you make a combination of, of using the tools and using what's in System Builder. The other thing is, again, I've mentioned this before, but use your whiteboards in Coach Accountable. Put in your goals. So those, again, those sheets that you've filled in at mass class or you've done when you've done the 24-hour uh, goal setting, what has ever, has ever come out of that personal and business goals, okay, right up here, Put it into here because if your practice growth expert understands what you're going for and we make this smart then again we've got a way of just measuring how you're doing because there's it, i don't want and then we can actually create actions if you want that are personal actions so as well as the actions that are to do with the clarity workbook you might have actions yourself that you can set up and trigger okay now, again, I don't want these things to be something that you feel you've got to do. I don't, I don't want you to feel like they are things that are another um, challenge. What they're there for is to just show you how you're doing. And if things are not good enough, you know, if things have got in the way, that's a perfect time to book an extra call, say, with a practical expert and say, look, stuff's getting in my way. How can I change what I'm doing? Because when you had that, that initial call with Shane or when you did this goal setting tool with your practice growth expert you were passionate about some change you were passionate about things changing and I don't want to get another six months down the line and you've not made some steps towards it so again let's use this let's use the whiteboards to say okay if you could set one up per goal and put right what are the steps I need to do or you could set it up in actions each one of your goals and go what are my steps and set them out so use the tools is what i'm saying because it's really important um, and then the other thing is again in your files you should all have a practice one page plan so the goals that you set around your business they need to be in here the numbers and more importantly your monthly targets and I would recommend that this is part of the conversation that you have with the practice growth expert, that every time you've completed a month on it, you go back and you look at that one page plan with your practice growth expert and actually say, right, what are the actions that need to be taken in order to move us towards our goals? I think one of the most challenging things out there is there is so much stuff, isn't there? There is stuff appearing in our emails all the time, new stuff, exciting stuff. This morning, I was looking for um, some flow charting software, but I actually wanted it like post-it notes, like I do, you know, when I do, when I write a system, I write it with post-it notes on the wall, so I can see it, so I wanted like a virtual one. And I just went off into so many tools and it was so exciting and there were so many choices. And, and But what happened was that I lost an hour this morning on something that actually didn't move me towards my goal in the end. So it's about working out what else is happening in your life, what else is happening in your working week that is not moving you towards your goal. So that every time you have a conversation with your practice growth expert, you are pushing towards that goal, you know, and it's and how and that you use it. It's really, really important. Yeah. So those if you are a member, you should have already been sent your own personal link. So, Jerry, Gloria definitely has a link to come access this for herself and for you to use. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you, yeah, I'm just on the, the coaching uh, website and um, you get 10 clients for 50 bucks, as in 50, yes. pound, 50 pounds. 
I think it's probably a good idea to actually get practice through yourselves at AVN, getting to know the tool and see how it can be used and then adapt it when, you, when you're ready for it and just obviously start with two. You know, that's costing you $10 per client for two clients just to build up rather than just yeah, dive yeah. straight into it, definitely. Yeah, and I think that's it. That's what I'm thinking because you can build it. And again, if you do decide to use it, uh, Joe, with your clients, then let me know because obviously I'm building courses and all sorts of things in it. So there's lots of opportunity there. Oh, that's Ooh. very nice of you. So that you, you, you sent me a message. Sorry, Jerry. So you're okay with sharing that sort of stuff uh, with uh, the members, yeah? I want to do it, yeah, because I, I, you know, I've learned how to write courses so that, you know, all this stuff that you see in the action plans, this is all generated by a course and it triggers at different times. So when people complete certain things, mm -hmm. it triggers additional actions or it triggers additional files to go in your folders. So it might trigger different ones to go in here. Um, so there's a very simple way of doing that. So, so basically what, what you're saying, Emma, is we, they can be white labeled for ourselves. Is that correct? Well, this, this is basically Coach Countable. And when you buy it, you label it yourself. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You white label it. But in terms of actual courses that you're doing, then they, you create them yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we can perhaps contact you saying, okay, how do you do this in terms of this? And then you'll either share it and, or yes, how to, to operate it and set it up as a training tool. Yes, exactly. Well, yes. that's brilliant. So actually you can actually build your own, you know, cause we use Kajabi and primarily of a video oriented. Yes. And obviously we lose a lot of the AVM resources within Kajabi because that's obviously our training platform. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously I know AVN use Kajabi as well. Um, it's, it's not inexpensive just, just to <laughs> warn everybody else. Uh, but a well worth investment if you can get your head around it. But uh, this is a very good um, economical substitute. Yeah, because again, you can create, as you probably all spotted, when when you when you join, when you're welcome, you 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 get videos automatically sent to you, and they're just videos stored on a YouTube channel that you can get a link to, and it'll show you how you know you can just watch it. So there are lots of simple ways of doing it. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jerry. And thank you, Simon, for sending me um, some stuff about sticky notes. <laughs> so that's great. I can play with that later as well. Thank you. So to me, the really important thing is setting out your goals and if possible, setting out your personal goals because your login to Coach Countable is yours alone unless you choose to share it with somebody else. It's your own login. I don't have access to uh, anything other than if you give me permission to it. Okay, so you can write stuff on here. So I could add a whiteboard and I could choose whether I share it with my coach or I keep it private. So there could be stuff on there that's personal that I want to keep track myself. Okay, so it gives you the op option to do lots of things, um, but use it and use it with your practice growth expert is what I'm saying. Um, the other thing, um, if I can just put... put we're going through time again, aren't we? Um, there's a really, really simple resource. Okay, it's actually one that we wrote for you to deliver as part of the business edge session. But there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it before yourself. Okay, so this is about actions. Um, so you know, having the goal, you know. Think about the long-term targets, what are the medium, and then what do we have to do now? And then they become your measures. Um, because when we do a goal, it's a big project, isn't it? I know Ethan doesn't like the word goal, he likes projects, and they are projects. And every project needs to be broken down into sections, little actions. What can we manage each quarter? What can we manage uh, depending on what else is going on in our business? Um, so again, using this is another very simple tool to just get your head around how do we break it down? How do we, how do we find a way? And, and always thinking about why. Why are we doing this? What is it that we want to achieve? Okay. So that's the important thing because you, what, as you know from what you know, this stuff Shane talks about, your why has to be really strong for you to stay focused. Okay. Yeah. Because Glory Glory uses mind genius to help her for, formulate her goals. Obviously, that's a tree type structure. So that's one for people to have a look at. Oh, thank you, mind yeah. genius. Mind genius, yes. You can get a desktop version, online version as well. Okay. Uh, so maybe about 120, 145 quid. 
uh, but the desktop version is about 175 or something like that. But uh, definitely worth it, worth it. Um, you can use use for anything for job tax, you know, sharing with your team as well, delegation. So it's it's quite massive actually, um, and because that's tree structure, um, it's right. easy, easy to follow as well. And you obviously, get printouts, PDFs, and share them with people. Okay, that's a great idea. Okay. Um. So the last thing really I wanted to mention was you, you might have seen that I put on our Facebook group the other day about holding yourself accountable. You know, yes, we, you should be using your practice growth expert. You know, their job is to hold you accountable and, and you know, they need to keep pushing and, and supporting you in a positive way to make the changes you want. But there is an element of only you need to do some of these things as well. So think about it. First of all, you know, are you a visual person? If you're a visual person, then please get some pictures on the wall of what you're trying to achieve. Make a vision board. Make have have something. I mean, I'm I'm not great with pictures, but I have words. Words resonate for me, so I just have words around me that that mean something and that keep triggering what I'm doing. Um, but make sure it's written down, and if possible, have it on. You know, if it's something important to you, you know, have it on your screensaver. Have it somewhere where it's going to keep popping up, this picture, you know, um, whether that's your lakeside house or your new car or, you know, the family holiday or, or whatever you've got in your, in your mind that's your goal for the next 12 months. Keep, keep it coming up to remind you. Um, make sure that you plan ahead of where, when it is and actually set a, a goal about when it's going to happen and make a commitment to it. Um, so if you remember, Shane shared a story um, in Masterclass and he shared a class about Maria Dolson, who uh, wanted to go and take her kids to Lapland, but never felt that she could afford the time or the money to do it. And after watching one of Shane's uh, training sessions on procrastination, she went and just booked the holiday for 18 months time. And so it was in the diary. It was booked. She'd made a down payment. And then she just had to find the money and the time. And that because it was there, she made it happen. And sometimes we have to be that brave. We have to say, OK, this is the date. You know, it's like losing weight for a wedding or whatever. You've got to have a reason why. and You've got to have the deadline to make it happen, because otherwise that deadline keeps moving. It will never happen. So, you know, make sure that you've got something visual that talks about timeline too. how close are we? Um, and, and that means then if you can break it down to chunks, that means it's easier. So, you know, Shane, talk, again, Shane talks about, doesn't he, about when he trained for his first Ironman, how the fact that, you know, in, although he had a plan for a year of training, in reality, he didn't start till several weeks before because he kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. But you need to understand that you need to break down that timeline into milestones and say, I have to hit this milestone. And if you can make yourself accountable for that, if you can explain that to your other half, your practice growth expert, your children, they're quite good at keeping holding you to account, then that's a good way of doing it. Then make sure that you do reward yourself for those small wins. And again, I hear this often, you know, people tell me stuff and then, and then they realize that actually they've, they've had a win because they're so overwhelmed with all the other stuff that's going on. So even if that win is going and buying yourself a nice bottle of wine instead of a cheap bottle of wine, you know, if that win is just going, okay, I'm going to have Monday off and go and have, you know, a day out with the dog or the kids or whatever, make sure that you've got that. And then it's actually get booked in your diary. That, that's yeah. a lot of a day out with a dog, isn't it? <laughs> I meant day out somewhere where the dog's like, oh, I have right. to take my off. dog with me. That's why. Sorry. That's fine. It's not motivated for me, but yeah. Yeah. But like I said, tell others about your plans. It's really, really important. And also, don't set yourself the biggest task first. Set yourself some nice small things that you can achieve so, so that you start building up that positivity around the fact you are going to achieve the goal. You know, if you set yourself what ends up being a giant task that when you look at it, it actually should have been broken down into 20 other little tasks, then just stop that. And then that's another thing, again, to talk to your practice growth expert about and say, look, this is my goal. How do we break it down? How do we break it down into small manageable chunks? How do we make it so that we can build momentum and that as things start growing, then we can go, okay, now we're ready for that bigger task. Okay. So 
you know, we're all we're all sort of a fair with it with with exercise that you would build up. And, you know, it's that um, count to five k, isn't it? There's a plan for breaking that down. Well, you know, what else can you do for your business? And then the last thing is to make sure that you don't procrastinate. So you remove the distractions. You stop those things that you set yourself reminders. Um, it's really interesting. I'm reading a book and um, it's about, it's from a coach and she was saying that, you know, she works with some, as always, these coaches, they work with some very high flying people. And one of them, um, one of their goals was to lose weight, but he was so overweight, he didn't want to go to a gym because that would have been embarrassing. Um, and he knew that running was probably a good first step, but again, he didn't want to go out running because he thought, I look like sort of a lump of bouncing fat going along, walking along, I'd look, everybody would be laughing and I'd just feel embarrassed. And possibly I could only get to the road end of the road anyway, the first time. So he set him a challenge, which was that he had to get up at five o'clock in the morning and go and do his run straight away. Because at five o'clock, nobody was going to see him. At five o'clock, nobody cared if he only got to the end of the road and back, but at least he'd done that. And so actually sometimes it's about going, okay, look, this is a hard thing, but let's do it first. Let's get it out of the way. Small little thing, well, a small little step. You know, just go and do it. Don't say I'll do it at six o'clock at night. No, do, get up early and do it. Uh, Kerry is just an amazing inspiration to me in our office. You know, she's up at five because she wants to improve herself. She's been doing all this coaching training, all this mindfulness training, all this additional yoga stuff training. And she gets up at five because she gets an hour before the kids wake up. But she's made that commitment to do that. So what is so important to you that you'd be willing to do that? So think about how you can motivate that. Emma? Okay. Yep. Are you, um, something I've tried recently is recommended to me is, a, is the Pomodoro technique. Yeah. I found that's really, I, I had a stage, I think it was sort of in the middle of lockdown where we kind of all kind of had, you know, <laughs> thought, what's the point? And actually I put that into place and I had a large book sort of conversion exercise from one system to another and I split it down into 25 minutes. And, you know, it, it made, I compared it to doing one, one hour where I struggled through and thought, what's going on? And actually, I started 20, then I did 25 minutes or five minutes or 25 minutes on, et cetera. And that five minute break allows you to sort things that are going, your brain sorts of things somehow by not being focused on it. It fixes yeah. this sort of thing. How, oh, how am I going to get that bank thing into this? And suddenly, boom, there's a solution. And your next five, 25 minutes is it more productive and you get better. And it's the kind of five minutes is a reward. But the important thing is when you've completed it, the whole thing, then you take 15, 20 minutes off and go and do something else. And you then find that you, you get twice as much done. Yeah. I, I love that for those things that I don't want to do. Yeah, exactly. Particularly if there's something <laughs> that I don't want to do and I go, well, actually, I'm only doing it for 25 minutes. Mm, yeah. That's all I'm committing myself to do. And then what mm. happens, like you said, normally, is once you're in it, Actually, you could extend it for another 25 minutes or whatever. But yeah, I mean, you do. Can know that if it's really horrible, I'm going to park it in 25 minutes mm. and it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it may, you don't the task becomes 25 minutes rather than a big, a big project. And it's a, and you don't need any training. You don't have to buy any books on it. You just implement it. It's easy. Yeah. And there's <laughs> so many little time on your phone or whatever. whatever. Yeah, that's actually that's that. Thank you. That's a perfect. That's a perfect example. OK. Um, the other thing that um, I wanted to just tap onto today, um, well, there's two things, but I'm just conscious of the time. So the one that I'm going to talk about is about um, the performance measure improvement system. So there's a lot of you that have got access to the advisory tools, okay? And the performance measure improvement system is a big part of that because it allows us to look at making those first steps of changing our positioning with our clients because we're talking about the numbers, which they're confident that we know what we're talking about. And then we start moving into advisory work by talking about the numbers. And that's really important. But there's, there's a really lovely um, tool that um, Phil Carbon gave us actually, um, which he just built around uh, the PMI. So this is a pains checklist. So it's a little document that 
that he created, which his team has. And when they sit down with their clients in the meeting, they just go, you know, just, just before we start, you know, I just want to find out what your current concerns are. So would you mind just flicking down this list and just ticking the things that are currently your concerns? Okay, so I'm struggling to grow, feel I'm paying a lot of tax, spend a lot of time doing admin work, falling behind with my record keeping, I wish I had more time, I don't think our board meetings are productive or we don't even hold them. I don't know when I can retire. I don't know what I want out of my business. I don't have a plan to achieve what I want. I don't really know how the business is performing. I don't know how we compare to previous years or how we compare to our competitors. I don't know how much our business is worth. I don't know how much profitable my business could be. And I don't have an action plan to achieve to improve my business, okay? So all of that is a really simple windows of opportunity chart in effect, where we sit, where they sit there and they go, do you know what, these are the issues. And then you can say, okay, and if I was to ask you out of these, what was the top one or the top three that were important to you? That would be great. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go away and I'll come back to you with some ideas of how I could help. You could do that, okay? Now, what he also did for us was actually, he actually gave us a document that supports this. So how we deliver it. Let's just, just download the whole thing so you can see it. Yeah. So basically, this was the document then he trained his team on. Um, and I think it's just a fabulous way of engaging your team with the performance measure improvement system as well, but also knowing what you've got in the toolbox in ABN that delivers it. So I'm struggling to grow my businesses. Well, there's lots of ways we can help, but actually our five-star package, so our top level one, includes a higher level of benchmarking and the business potential session to open up possibilities of how we can help. And here it's telling, it's telling the team, just open up times up in this case, select the five-star package and produce a proposal. Okay, and that will show what all the services are. I'm paying a lot of tax, our four-star package, uh, and explain that. This is the one that where we actually really look at that. And again, open times up. I'm spending a lot of time doing admin work, perhaps take Offer to take care of just some of their company secretarial bookkeeping payroll. And again, this is just has a link to basically a document they've got, a document in System Builder, perhaps showing them what zero looks like, you know, looking at whatever different tools they use. Okay. I'm falling behind my record keeping, offering to do the bookkeeping. Okay. So we can use zero to support that or QuickBooks or whatever you want. We can price that through times up or, or you know, come back to that later. I wish I had more time to spend on the business. Perhaps they could watch the Michael Gerber video, you know, which talks about, you know, being busy fools and getting the, you know, suffering from the entrepreneurial seizure and not actually understanding about running a business and then use the 24 hour action plan. So again, got a link, it's in System Builder. I don't think we have board hold productive board meetings or we don't hold them at all. So again, we can discuss the board view service. And then again, here's the system. Here's the document the system builder as the service summary. So you've got everything you need already in there. So for each of these things, so we've we've got personal balance sheet and business valuation. We've got 24 hour action plan for knowing what you want out of the business. Um, perhaps helping them create a business plan, but one that actually thinks about their goals. Um, so all of these are a really great idea to help you. And then of course, these all link. So if you start doing goal setting, that's step one of the numbers folder. So you can say, you know, I'm glad you wanted to do that. Let me give you a folder that you can store it all in. Here it is. Let's put it in there, fine. Again, personal balance sheet, that might be slightly separate, but we could do a business plan in there. We can do the one-page plans, success driver mapping. 
So all the other things, business valuation, business potential, are all then you can start storing in there. So it's a really great way of introducing people to that idea, I think, of, you know, what could we use and how can we connect people to it? So I just wanted to show you that, that, you know, and even if at the moment you're not using the PMI folder, don't stop talking about it. Talk about it anyway. And then as soon as people, you know, if you've not got access to all the advisory stuff yet, if people start showing an interest, then obviously we can just switch it on for you to have a look at and get things moving on it. But it's a really nice way to connect what their issues is with how you can solve it, which is what basically we've always said. We're not sales people. We're here to try and show people what the opportunities are. The great thing about the numbers folder, it's got so much information in it, just looking at it, you know, they can be quite overwhelmed, but they know you're in control of the numbers because it's been broken down so succinctly. And it's a really good design. Thank you. Thank you for providing it. <laughs> right. We've only got a couple of minutes left. I've talked as usual far more than I should have done. So have we got any questions? Has anybody got anything that I whizzed through too fast or any questions? Any suggestions on what to use for capturing new contact details? Okay, Mia. So again, that depends on um, what you want to do with it. Some of them, yeah. Libby's put accounts in manager, exactly. So if you've already got a CRM package that allows you to do that, then please use them and just tag them as, as prospects. If you just want to use something like MailChimp to just start collecting them so that you can do, you need to have something that allows you to then communicate with them on a regular basis. So something as simple as MailChimp or even just a simple database. Uh, but again, thinking about how can you make that most efficient? And again, with like a council manager or center or something else, you can automate a series of post emails, you know, so if you've got their contact information. Does anybody use anything else? capturing contact details. We use Kajabi because it's got the marketing system inside it as well. Yeah. In this one you guys use as well. But uh, yeah, we've tried infusion we've tried yeah, infusion soft. Um, it is very expensive and uh, we had a third party uh, people using it. I won't, I won't name names, uh, but they're from Yorkshire. Well the guys from Yorkshire, you know what Yorkshire people are like. Not that I'm saying anybody from Yorkshire on the call might both really nice people as a nice accountants, but um, yeah, um, we pay a lot of money, about 500 plus per month uh, for a year, um, and probably about two leads of that. The, the trick is, I think, is to try and look at what software you've already got and try and mm. get the most out of it. Not just go looking for the next bright, shiny object that says it can do everything initially. If you're going to go really head on into wanting to market, if you're wanting to grow your business, you know, by 300, 400%, then Yes, maybe we need a more substantial tool, but at the beginning, try and use what you've already got. Uh, yeah, the best possible, because we have to use the stuff where you don't use properly. Yeah, just you join LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, start posting your own videos, uh, contact form on your website, uh, do your lead magnets. I mean, you, you guys have provided so many lead magnets, it's absolutely ridiculous. One of the 17 tips you just talked about there, the 55 tips. Mm -hmm. You can take, as I mentioned, the one of the calls two weeks ago, just take five of the tips out that uh, you can group together and create your own uh, lead magnet and then just give it a, give it away. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, lots, lots of people in the, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, hi, Ethan. Hi. There is a really simple thing you can use as well. It's um, a three by five card you know, and a little card box and you need a one to 31 card index and a monthly card index. Whenever you get a prospect, you jot their basic details down, slot them in the card, slot them in the monthly one to start with. And at the beginning of each month, you take them out and you put them in the month in the daily ones. And then you just start contacting them. It's really straightforward. It doesn't involve anything on a computer. You can also be sitting on your desk to remind you you need to do it rather than relying on automation. And it's so simple and you can carry three by five cards you know, in your pocket. I've got a couple in my wallet all the time. If you meet someone, you can just jot a few notes down about them, swap cards, you're away. And then later on, you can think about putting them into something which is a bit more 
digital, shall we say. But of course, if and you haven't been doing that. Say again? Have you? No. Sorry, I missed that. You haven't been doing that for the last year, because you haven't been doing that for the last year because you've been locked down. Yeah. yeah? You've not I been actually, cheating. I really like that idea of something that your client managers should do. That they because they should be contacting their clients on a regular basis, not just when they're doing the accounts, and to have a box where and something visual. Because again, I don't know about the rest of you, but I sometimes get a bit things get lost in pieces of software. I forget to go and look at a list somewhere, and you know, you don't you don't get the reminders. But to have like like you said that card box and go, okay, I need to call John today, and I need to call Sarah tomorrow, and whatever, and have yourself a little. Like they just move the cards around and write, yeah, I wrote, I called them or I emailed them or I did something. Um, just as a basic thing for perhaps your team to be having better contact with. Um, that might be a nice thing to do as well. Yeah, it's, it's just a simple spreadsheet, you know, somebody's name, what the business is, contact details, and just what I call follow-up sheets, basically. Yeah. And just keep keep on adding to it and just have one, one follow-up sheet per, per client, much the same what you've got in System Builder anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that if you've got software like Accounts Manager or any others, you can put notes on, you can put whatever. So at least you can keep that track in there. But if you don't want to be using software, like you said, then that's a, there's a nice, simple way of doing it. Okay. So there's lots of people putting on uh, different pieces of software. Um, yeah. So I think, Mia, you've been given lots of ideas there. So I'm hoping you've all looked at those. So there's some really good ones in there. Um, but I, th I think that's the thing, isn't it? But like I said, if you can use what you've already got don't spend more money and let you know because there's too many we've got so many people i know that have got software that they're not using a third of it what it's capable of doing it might not be perfect yeah, think, but for the beginnings it's probably quite a good start anybody else got any other questions or you can get to if you travel sorry hi amy Sorry, Hello. I didn't get that. Sorry, Emma. Accounting, accountancy lives on this Thursday, yeah. The event this this Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday, and um, if you register for them, you, you can get to some the sponsors are giving stuff away for free. One of which is Fluidly. Um, I'm, I, I've seen it before, but I can't remember what it's all about, but you get 12 months free trial for it. And I'm just trying to get a double check on that one that, you know, you've got to sign up for another year. <laughs> you know, I've not had a response from, from, from Dan Crockerton, who's the organiser for them guys. But um, yeah, it might be worth having a look on, on that because I've got a series of workshops. And Ainsley uh, is, is on it. He, he won Accounting Web Awards a few yeah. years back. I don't know where you know Ainsley. Yeah, he's a good guy, him. I like him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know that quite often, because part of Fluidly as well, they've now got Predict, haven't they, which is cash flow forecasting for three months, and they give the three-month version free. So you can do like a three-month forecast, but then you pay for the 12-month forecast. So, yes, there's lots of opportunities for other connections. Okay. Brilliant. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been lovely to have you all on again today. And thank you for your contributions. It makes a big difference to me. Um, and I will see you next week. So have a lovely afternoon. Take care. Thanks, Emma. Take care. Thank you. Bye.